Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is drjaredcarter.com, and I am here today with Scott and Paul of Patient Sites. Scott is founder of Patient Sites. Paul is one of the brilliant minds there. Uh, they've both been working uh, to help me with my clinic website and Facebook ads uh, for a, a good long while now. And uh, obviously, uh, Patient Sites has been the primary sponsor of the Cash Based Practice podcast, and uh, they've both been guests. And, and we're kind of doing this video in association with my most recent interview of Scott. Um, where he started talking about some stuff and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, we need to record this. I want to, I want to know more. And it, it was one of those things that just didn't convey audio wise. So what we're going to do today, um, and I'll let Scott and Paul kind of go into the details and maybe give a little more of a, of a kind of 10,000 foot view, but essentially we're looking at some things that they are developing and utilizing for their clinics uh, in order to go about search engine optimization in a, in a a different way uh, and having incredible results with with as you if you listen to the to the podcast um, just some incredible uh, results with ranking for um, you know a large amount of keywords and key phrases and being able to, to be a small clinic and do that against large corporate chains um, and, and it's just I was blown away and that's why I was like we have to record this so thank you guys for coming on and and uh, and you know taking the time to do this and showing us kind of the special sauce of of what y'all are coming up with here I'm really excited about it yeah we're uh, super we're equally pumped to do this it will awesome. this will be this will be a fun session yeah. So why don't you give us kind of a, a background and overview of, of what we're going to be looking at today, and then we'll dive in uh, and actually, re you know, show some screen recording of how you go through this data mining, you know, uh, an opportunity mining process. Yeah. So I, what, opportunity mining is what we call this, and it's a bit of a, 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 a reverse of the general SEO process. Um, often I find that when people think about, you know, SEO and, uh, you often start with navel gazing, right? You kind of think about the things that you think about and go, well, you know, we want to rank for this. We want to rank for back pain. So let's write an article about back pain. Well, you have any idea how many articles are out there for back pain? Yeah. Um, now, when you're, you know, tweaking your language geographically, um, obviously you're going to have, you know, you're not out to compete against the web MDs of the world. So, right. you know, when, when you, you know, complement the back pain uh, kind of language with your, geographic presence, you obviously, you know, improve your, your competitiveness, but you're still starting with what you think about, right? And so the whole idea of opportunity mining is to really try and get inside the head of the customer, the prospect a little more. And, and we, and we say, let the data speak, right? It's, it is a mining exercise. It's a, we're not going in with any uh, foregone conclusions. And sometimes we go down a dead end and we back up and we go down another path, right? Um, but it's, it literally is, you know, it's like mining. Um, yeah, so, so it's, it's, we've been, you know, re, we've been trying to unlock, um, our strategy for SEO for some time and it's been, and I'll be honest, I think we've had some level of, uh, you know, we've gone down some wrong, wrong paths ourselves, uh, and, and not necessarily hit the right configuration. And I think, you know, one of the reasons is we, we th often find that, you know, people are maybe looking for uh, a magic, you know, dust or, you know, a quick solution mm -hmm. and, you know, they think of SEO and they don't want to spend necessarily money on it. And often agencies will, you know, layer in something called SEO into their offering just because they feel like <laughs> they have to have it. So it feels like it's, it's been kind of stuck in the physical therapy world, to be honest, and, and my, from my standpoint, and, you know, having worked with like billion dollar companies over the years, we've a hard, had a hard time trying to figure out how to bring, you know, true SEO discipline, right. Um, uh, done well, because it's, mm -hmm. It, it, it's a different art, right? When you try to do it well to physical therapy. So, you know, the, the kind of light switch moment for us a while back was really trying to look at it and, and think of it from an asset standpoint, right? So some of the stuff we'll show you today to actually execute and build well on it, to be honest, is can be costly if you outsource it. Now you can do a lot of it yourself and it becomes a, a lot more affordable. But the whole, the whole you know, uh, idea is that we want to build, look at SEO from a lead generation standpoint, and build at solid assets um, that are going to draw people in over time. In other, wor other words, what, what you build today will be working for you six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Um, and the whole idea being, you know, from a asset standpoint, um, you can dial up or down 
the investments. So, you know, you, if you want to build, let's call it six of these lead generator uh, generators a year. Um, and, you know, you do that for 10 years, you've built yourself 60 of them. If your budget has to be dialed back and you build three per year, you build three, three per year. And we'll get into that as we go through some of the examples today. But the idea is to think about it as, you know, at the end of the day, if you go to sell your clinic, um, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily view marketing through this lens. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's a buyer looking at two clinics inside of a market and, you know, obviously, you know, we talked in, in our podcast about marketing mix, right? So let's not, mm -hmm. you know, I want to make sure we don't go down the same rabbit hole ourselves and just talk about, you know, say you should only be focusing on one thing. So what we're going to talk about today is one part of the marketing mix. Um, but within your marketing mix, if you look, look at trying to build lead generation assets, and so let's say you, you take a, a 10 year investment strategy, right? And over 10 years, if you build 50 to 100 of these kind of lead generator kind of concepts we're going to talk about today, and th those are perpetually working for you. And they're not going to drive huge results in month one, or maybe, maybe not any specific month, but they're going to be consistent and stable over time. Um, that kind of business that says, I want to actually control my own destiny with some of my marketing is going to be worth a lot more than the business down the road that, um, you know, is, is wholly reliant on something like paid ads, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say that paid ads shouldn't be part of your marketing mix. And obviously word of mouth referrals should be a huge part of your marketing mix. So as we start to put it all together, you know, there should be a number of things you should be working on. Um, but this asset thinking is, I think, a little different than uh, how people often look at SEO. Very good. Well, let's, uh, let's dive in. What, like, you know, how, how do you start with this process? Okay. So if we were working with you, I'd, one of the first things we'd do is, you know, is talk about picking a theme, right? And a mm -hmm. theme would be, you know, something like working with runners or back pain or knee pain or whatever, right? And it, you know, again, it doesn't matter to us what that theme is. So we want to explore a theme. So we would throw a question over to you and say, all right, if you wanted to, and it's not to say you can't focus on multiple themes over time, but we said, if you picked one to start on, let's say for, you know, for Carter PT, um, what's an example of a theme that you would want to be building your ranking on for your clinic? Um, well, let me think about that. I'm thinking about my, my two primary therapists right now and what they really like working on, really treat things head to toe. I mean, why don't we, uh, why don't we do something on the shoulder? It's, uh, I'd like to kind of go a little, I guess, less searched, less like broad as say back pain typically yeah. is just to kind of, cause I'm, I'm sure that's something that, you know, you guys have done this process on probably all the body parts, but yeah, let's look at shoulder. All right. I know they're both fantastic with shoulders. Okay. So let me share my screen. So you should be looking at that on your end now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to use a, a keyword explorer tool. And there's a whole variety of these out there. You can even look at, as you'll know, when you search Google, um, there'll be the, the drop down list of what's called search suggestions. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of a concept, right? Where you say, okay, if we pick something like shoulder, what are all the related suggestions that people are looking for? And there's a variety of tools that you can use. We're, we're using one that, that we, we use a lot internally called uh, uh, Ahrefs. So I'm going to be um, tying into the Google search for this. So um, let's just start, start with, how about we start with shoulder pain? Sure. Okay. And again, the, 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 you know, often the starting point and the end point in most SEO exercises is if we want to target shoulder, let's write a article on shoulder pain and you'll send somebody away and say, come back with an article. You post it on your website and you go, we're done. Right. <laughs> um, so we want to talk about how to go a little deeper and figure out what people are searching for. Now, the other strategy we build in here is, um, you know, tying uh, lead generation funnel tactics into this. So if we develop a series of articles on shoulder pain, one of, you know, the, the things that we find can work well from a lead nurture standpoint is working on, it can be, you know, lead magnets or landing pages that, that you know, f connect into uh, automated marketing funnels or drip marketing. Um, those kind of disciplines in terms of marketing automation that takes time to build. So if I were to sit down with you and say, let's work on a shoulder pain, um, you know, lead generation program. And we said, well, if we draw people in, but we have nothing to nurture them to mm -hmm. just that process of developing the nurture content, right? The series of emails, you know, how is your shoulder pain doing? Here's some tips, here's some exercises, here's some things we do at Carter PT. Um, maybe here's an ebook or maybe here's a link to, you know, sign up for a, a consultation. 
it takes quite a bit of time to develop all of that follow-up content. And I think, you know, you probably know more than most, right? You've done a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- what we want to do in this process is be able to look at developing a, you know, creating an asset for the follow-up marketing and developing a number of articles, right? That'll, that'll all leverage that asset. So if we can, let's say we develop five or 10 different shoulder pain articles and they'll all connect to the drip marketing sequence that we put in place. So we can leverage that versus if we do one in shoulder, one in back, one in ankle, you likely can't keep up quick enough in developing the funnel content, right? So we mm-hmm. want to leverage that as well. So, okay, so let's start here. So I'm going to search for shoulder pain and I am going to get um, a whole bunch of different um, pieces of information here. Uh, what I want to do is focus in the keyword ideas. So uh, in this uh, uh, section here, I've got a few columns. One is uh, keywords that have the same or similar terms or include the concept of shoulder pain, but in different ways. Um, the second column we're gonna dive into a little bit today is interesting, which is questions, right? Um, so sometimes people access the content you're looking for by asking a question. Like for example, 2,800 searches on how do I know if my shoulder pain is serious, right? Now mm-hmm. you can be writing an article on shoulder pain, but not asking that question, right? if we start to craft some of our content based on the questions people are looking for, um, it, it'll become interesting. Um, other uh, 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 ranking categories the fault that are related. And then there's a, this other uh, interesting concept called newly discovered, which is kind of like a, you know, uh, you know, if, if you really want to be on top of things, uh, it's looking at what are new, new, new or more recent things that people are searching for that they didn't search for before. So for example, why does my shoulder pain get worse at night, right? Mm-hmm. That question gets 600 searches a month. Um, and new, as, as a newly discovered topic, that one wouldn't, wouldn't have shown up uh, in this data uh, months earlier. So we're going to look this, at a- Is this um, worldwide right now that we have it set on? Correct, it's, world, okay. uh, it, it, correct, it's worldwide right now. Okay. Yeah. But okay. what we're looking for is to get an idea of what, what are people looking for, right? So let's go into- um, just the keywords themselves, right? In, in this, the, the keyword category. So having same terms. So there's lots of insight that we get here and uh, we're going to go deeper than what you're, what you're looking at just here. Um, but a couple of things that we try to filter out and, and this is a process that we've been working on refining and there's no, you know, reality is there's no secrets here, right? So it's, you know, we want to share some of the insights that, uh, you know, we think are valuable and can work um, uh, for your audience to leverage. So, a couple of key columns. This one here, first one, KD, is keyword difficulty, right? So um, shoulder pain in and of itself is a, a, a difficult keyword to rank for. It also has a, a, high, a high search volume. Um, but if we, you know, go a little bit lower, like, you know, pain between shoulder blades, ha- that uh, has a keyword difficulty of about 16. So a fraction of shoulder pain in and of itself um, and still has pretty high search volume. So one of the things that we look for in the mining process is to find keywords that have got relatively high search volume, meaning that there's some activity there, but lower keyword difficulty, right? And this connects to what I call a roll-up strategy, right? So now if you're running a clinic in a really remote market, the truth of it is you could write an article on sh- you know, shoulder pain in Kalamazoo and probably do okay, right? If people mm-hmm. are searching that. Um, but you know, people who are, you know, dealing with conditions and issues, even if you're in Kalamazoo, we're going to find through this process uh, are still looking in a more creative way, uh, for accessing the content than just typing in what you might think of as shoulder pain. So the discipline will still apply the elasticity in terms of how elastic the response of our, our writing to ranking is, is, is better in smaller markets than major markets. So if, if you're in Manhattan, um, you know, it'll take a little more, more work to, to gain traction with some of these things. But as a starting point, we want to, you know, in the mining process, start with finding keywords that have got decent search volume and lower keyword difficulty, right? Um, there's also a, a cost per click uh, component here, which brings in intelligence in terms of, you know, what's happening from uh, paid ads on these, these terms. That we think is a validator. Like if people are, if somebody's out there spending money to, to buy traffic on those keywords, it also tells us that it's a decent commercial term, right? So, you know, someone else is kind of saying, hey, there's value in that. So 
is we just look at the mining process. If we see that money's being spent, you know, we think, we think that that's, uh, we think that's interesting. So I'm just curious here. We've got, you know, all of these typically one to $2 and then you've got this pain between the shoulder blades, $15. What, what is that telling you? Yeah. So that's now some of the, uh, some, some of the, ad data. So they're pulling in, you know, data from multiple different sources, including Google AdWords. Um, so some of the times you'll find that niche terms, you know, may have a higher volume and sometimes the data may actually not be correct. Right. Okay. So there could be some variance on it. Paul, if you've got anything you want to add on that. Sometimes like even product companies will come in and they're trying to sell a product for a certain mm -hmm. solution and they're going to start bidding up a certain keyword very highly. Yeah, that and can happen too. Come yeah. into play, then you're competing against your, you know, competitors, and then the price just keeps going up over a period of time. So okay. you have some outliers here and there. So this outlier might be the result of companies competing really hard for that because they have a product that's specific to right. pain between the shoulder blades. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so on our on our side, it's uh, I think cost per click is just interesting because it. Uh, it, it, it just validates commercial intent, right? And it's not, you know, we don't use that to, you know, add spend as part of this process. It's just a validation standpoint. So, so let's work down off the left-hand side here. Um, we're going to click on a couple things. So uh, let's go uh, click on shoulder pain itself. To, um, okay, so we're going to come back into uh, our, our full list. And if we take, um, let's take something like shoulder blade pain, Right, so take that as a subset of the concept of shoulder uh, and shoulder pain. Um, it's going to expose a list of 19,000 keywords related just to shoulder blade pain. Right, so where I'm going with this is that if you think of shoulder, right, as a theme, below that we're going to expose a ton of sub themes that, in and of themselves, are their own content marketing opportunities. Right. So, you know, shoulder blade pain may in your traditional SEO deliverable be a sentence, right? We're going to say that shoulder blade pain in, a, in and of itself um, is worth, you know, going deeper at. So let's, let's kind of blow up um, what we see inside shoulder blade pain. And again, we didn't do this with you ahead of time. So sometimes we hit dead end. Sometimes we go, yeah, that doesn't work. Let's go a different direction. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is this mining process is designed to just, you know, expose opportunities. So if you start to look at some of the opportunities here, well, you know, I've got searches for pain below left shoulder blade. Um, you know, I've got, uh, how do you relieve pain under your shoulder blade? Right. Interesting question. Um, uh, pain behind shoulder blade what causes pain, uh, under left shoulder blade. Um, uh, you know, Jared, if any of these look kind of curious or interesting to you and go, huh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, I that's, guess what I, I'm surprised that people are, and maybe it's just a clinician and be like, why were, why are people searching for left versus, you know, actually putting in left shoulder blade or right shoulder blade as if it's now, I guess they just don't, I guess I'm just, just cause I'm a clinician, I wouldn't have think of it in that way, but it's interesting um, that they do. They clearly, you know, you've got some that say left, some say right. So um, I guess the question I would, I would say is like, if we found one of those, it's like, wow, that's a pretty high uh, search amount for how low the difficulty is. Absolutely. Um, and okay, well, let's target that. So then, so then you're really literally, you're writing at some uh, specific to the left or the right side and you're, you're putting in left shoulder blade yeah. pain multiple times in that article. Yeah, that's a good, good example. So I've, here I've exploded, here, here I've exploded just left shoulder blade, right? Okay. So I've gone a level deeper. And there's 284 search keywords just related to left shoulder blade, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see now some of them, there's, you know, some, there's some overlap between them, right? But, you know, pain between uh, left shoulder blade and ribs, um, uh, pain below my left shoulder blade, uh, sharp pain and back below left shoulder blade. Um, and it, in, in that, op so in, this is getting into kind of the, the depths of, of what we talk about when we say opportunity mining, right? And in this process, we're not, we don't yet care about what path we want to go down. Um, we're just exploring, right? We, we paint pictures of the data and then we'll bring back. So, you know, you said shoulder, right? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to one, one of many sub 
subtopic it's called shoulder blade and shoulder blade uh has a whole bunch of subtopics which in and of itself is 284 keywords, right? Um, now, for every clinic that does this, you're going to stop at a different level of depth, right? Um, and if you're in highly competitive markets, I would suggest you maybe go a little deeper, right? Then if it's in a less competitive market, because you, A, you've got broader population, you've got more search. Um, but the idea being that, you know, we talked about it in the podcast last week, you know, you, you mentioned that you know, that, that you had wondered if this kind of strategy, you know, was going down the road of kind of like, you know, uh, duplication of content or having similar articles. And what I said mm -hmm. is, no, oh, this is what we call more of a roll-up concept, right? So, and I, and I don't imagine that most clinics would write an article on left shoulder blade pain per se. You may, you might just stick it at shoulder blade and do some s paragraphs on left versus right and below. And you might, you know, kind of, uh, architecture article based on our learning here. But the idea is that if you develop content about, for example, just pain around your shoulder blades, uh, we're looking to roll that up to contribute to comp competing on just, you know, shoulder blade pain, pain relief, physical therapy for shoulder blade, right? So everything we, we, we do at this more niche level is rolling up in supporting your, your, your competitive uh, standpoint at, at that, what we call it the theme level, right? Which you just said, mm -hmm. the shoulder pain. So everything we do here, you know, roll up in that standpoint. So let me, I'm going to back up. So I'm now I'm going back from uh, left shoulder blade. Um, Before you dive into that, I, I was curious though, earlier we established since this, we're looking at global search volume, global, you know, searches for each of these keywords or phrases. Um, is it something like, do you guys, I know you work with a lot of clinics. So as far as, you know, something that you're going to disperse out among all your clinics, um, you know, websites and their content, um, I think obviously for you, it makes sense to, you know, to, to use global volume or at least, you know, all the United States and the, and the other countries that you have clients. Um, but for an individual clinic doing this, would you say hone in on just your country or just your state or just your area or even, is that even possible? Yeah. So you'll see in, in the data here, like, so 67% of the search volume in this category is U S based, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So we are bringing into perspective what, what percentage of it happens, you know, inside the U S and then obviously as you go down into, you know, cities and regions, um, the search volume obviously becomes a little bit lower and that's why in in your market you'll determine you know and we we provide our clients with some guidance on you know how deep do you want to go mm -hmm. right in terms of you know uh, crafting niche articles relative to the mining and that often is a reflection of the competitiveness of the market you live in right so the more competitive the market the more niche you want because that's your best strategy at competing at those higher theme levels, right? Is providing more content related to what people are searching. Because when you write it, when you write about left shoulder blade pain, you are by in fact writing and contributing to your whole idea of physical therapy for shoulder pain, right? The t the two are they're completely interconnected. Um, but if you're in a in a highly competitive market, uh, the more we write these niche articles that are crafted based on what people are searching for that's your that's your way forward to compete on uh, on the general themes so the so writing a bunch of niche articles on the different subcomponents of of different types of shoulder pain yeah will help you rank higher for shoulder pain as a whole or physical therapy correct. for the shoulder okay correct yes and not necessarily just for those niche subtopics okay one other thing though back to that that last question is you know what if what if you're what if you're in a market where if you, if you kind of filter down the results here, you're where you're just searching, say in only your area, you know, you're maybe 25, 50 miles around your, I don't even know if that's possible. And with a lot of these things, there's, it's saying there's zero monthly search. Whereas if you're looking globally, it's like, Oh, but this has, you know, 16,000, you know, searches a month. Um, do you suggest that people, especially in smaller markets, you know, hone in and say, well, what is the actual volume in my area versus just looking at the global results and letting that drive your decisions on what you're going to start writing about? Well, that's why I said, I think there's some, um, 
consultation that has to be had or some thought that has to be had and part of as part of part of the clinic in terms of the overall strategy when you start. So that's why I said this, the, if we're working with a client, we're going to look at, you know, what search volumes for categories are in their particular market. Right. And if we determine that, you know, if you're in a really small market, um, you could write uh, higher up in the opportunity mining process. So you could write a fewer, fewer number of articles on different components of shoulder pain because you can hit the category shoulder pain a, a lot quicker if you're in a smaller market. Um, but that said, the insights that we get from the opportunity mining process um, give you perspective on the type of ways that people look to access that content, right? So if somebody in your, even even a smaller area, right, you're going to write a better article on shoulder pain if you understand what people are typing in when they look for it. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 I think probably the best, one of the best ways to answer that question is the output of the mining process for us is this drives the content strategy from our writing standpoint, right? So there would be two components to it. One is you determine how deep are we going to go, which would be a factor of how competitive the market is the market you're in. But regardless uh, of how deep we go, we're going to let a lot of the data from the mining process dictate what we should write about. So in a, you know, in a uber competitive market, we might be talking about, um, you know, shoulder blade pain as an article, right? In a less competitive market, we might be writing a 600 word paragraph about shoulder blade pain as part of one longer article, right? So the strategy may determine based on how competitive you are, but the idea is traditionally the way, you know, people approach SEO is again, where I started with, you'll say, hey, we wanna write about shoulder pain, get somebody to go write an article. Well, is that article long enough? Which is another component, right? Most most of the articles that we're working on are around 2000, 2000 words, which is, you know, the most recent information from, you know, uh, search engine performance in terms of what works well. So is the article long enough? And second enough, second of all, why would we start writing an article about shoulder pain based on, you know, where the writer's mind takes them versus sitting back and saying, how are people looking to access content based on statistics, right? Because, you know, if we take the time to write about um, shoulder blade pain as part of it, right, um, even if it's in a smaller market, we are contributing to the, the, the bigger theme itself being shoulder, shoulder pain, shoulder physical therapy. So everything you do at the niche level rolls up. Um, so this is more about a content directive. So what happens is when we send an article from this kind of process to our writers, the, what, the writers have a prescription which says, this is the title that we want, right, for the article based on, again, the size of the market and what we, want to, what we want to look at. And here are all of the H2s or the secondary headings, which are your paragraph headings, right? So we provide that to the writer based on the intelligence. And then we'll say, here are some specific sentences we want you to work into the paragraphs based mm -hmm. on this, right? Okay. So again, again, it's not just, you know, kind of, uh, you know, spin the bottle and find out what keywords we should land on. The whole, the mm -hmm. whole objective is to develop your content writing plan so that now when the writer writes, they're building that article based on the intelligence of how people are accessing the content, which I think is universal, big market or small market. Mm -hmm. Difference between big market and small market is how many articles we would suggest you may have to write to compete at the higher level. And create a true asset. That's right. That's create really, a true asset. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so if I come back, um, so th th all we're looking at here is, uh, is just the, you know, just the keywords inside shoulder pain. But if we go back to our, um, kind of category list and go from keywords, let's say to questions, there's a whole other component, right? Which is, you know, what are the questions that people are, uh, asking, right? You know, shoulder pain when I lift my arm, uh, how do I know if shoulder pain is serious? How do I, how should I sleep with shoulder pain? Right. That's a good one. It's a really low um, uh, difficulty on that one. The the how yeah, looks like uh, one point eight thousand and only a seven yeah. on the difficulty. It's a good point. So let's click, so if we click into this, um, we'll see that now in this case. So now we're getting towards the end of the line, right? There's mm -hmm. points where you go, okay, we've kind of exposed that as deep as we can, but this will tell us that there's seven ways that people are asking questions related to, you know, how should I sleep with shoulder pain, right? And there's you know, different uh, combinations. And where you see no data, 
it doesn't mean it's not searched. It just means that there's not enough information on it, right? So uh, it, it's it's not always, you know, I wouldn't always go down the road just saying, just focus on those with data. That's where we start. But we look at everything else from a, um, uh, a guidance standpoint. So in, in our article development, we would say to the writer, you know, we want to have some questions that should be part of our H2 strategy, right? And, uh, or even built into the paragraphs. So the writers that do work for clients that we work with in this world, um, they have a prescription that's super clear on what you want to, how you want to develop your article based on, you know, all of this kind of intelligence. And then you go back to the whole asset idea of the whole thinking being, if, if you invest in developing great content like this, as you rank well today or tomorrow or three months from now, um, th it's very hard to undo your ranking on, on this from a long-term standpoint, right? Because there's very few mm -hmm. clinics that go through this amount of work. Everybody goes, hey, throw up a blog, blog post on back pain, right? Throw up a right. blog post on runners, throw up a blog post on this, right? Well, in, you know, again, you may be missing a huge amount of opportunity in terms of how people are accessing that content, number one. Um, and number two, you're not really building a beachhead, right? Because it's just as easy for every other clinic in your market to write a similar blog post on back pain or knee pain. Mm -hmm. um, and what we see is most clinics are doing things that are either, you know, 500 words to a thousand words, which first of all, isn't long enough. They're mm -hmm. not researched well enough. Uh, sometimes we see clinics getting, you know, SEO services where, you know, the, the content they're getting, it's the same content under an SEO umbrella that, you know, other clinics have, right? Mm -hmm. um, those aren't beachheads, right? So our, our view on this is let's look at SEO from a beachhead standpoint. Mm -hmm. Let's develop substantial content that'll stand the test of time that's based on what people are searching for and hook in all of these buzz terms that we we hear about in lead gen marketing, like your lead magnets and your eBooks and your drip campaigns. And right. So, you know, our advice in that process would be, you know, if, if you can think about just, you know, based on, on you looking at this, I'm going to assume, you, Jared, you'll have seen more than one angle for an article on shoulder pain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm already got my, my plan going in my head here for, for right? shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what on that topic, and I don't want to get divert too far off to the side, but I think it's it's interesting because I didn't know this most. You're saying the most recent stat of really uh, an article needing to be, uh, you know, 2000 words or more to, to be, you know, sufficient, you know, based on what the algorithms are doing right now. Um, and that's, you know, it's not a small amount of words. No. Um, and, and, you know, you guys and a lot of the bigger companies, you know, have great writers. Um, you obviously, you know, you're using clinicians to, to, to help with that as well. Um, you know, smaller clinics, I wonder, you tell me if you think this would be um, a, a decent kind of not workaround, but like a way to make this doable and efficient and not um, not too costly time wise or financially would be uh, going through the process that you're taking us through now, finding the maybe 10 things or the 10 sub niches uh, and, and keyword or key phrases underneath uh, say shoulder pain as a whole that we've identified. Okay this is decent or good volume for a low enough difficulty. I'm going to do 10 videos answering, you know, five, maybe five of them we got from questions and five are just key phrases, but I'm going to do a video on each of those. And that's going to be like the title. Cause I know that's exactly what people yep. are looking for. Um, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to plan the video. I'm going to work. And this is for people who are obviously comfortable on video, but you know, maybe you do a 10, 15 minute video, have that go to a transcription service and then you or a staff member can kind of divvy it out into paragraphs and, and use the H2, the subheaders that you also will show us how to identify as well. Um, do you think that that would be, you know, a strategy that would work or do you see that as being like, ah, eh, you know, for what, for X, Y, Z reason, that's not as, as good of an approach. Well, I think, you know, video is definitely an engaging media, right? Um, so the, from, but from a, a standalone SEO standpoint, it comes back into, if you, I think if you do ample amount of research before you go and do those videos to make mm -hmm. sure that you're crafting your videos to hit, um, mm -hmm. you know, the equivalent of those H2s and subtexts, um, you'll be able to get you know, a fair amount down the road. Um, but if you're, 
you know, if, if your video strategy is not replicating what we do from a written standpoint, then your transcription would reflect that. I see. Right? Yeah, I see. You know, yeah. But, so but if, you're, the, if you're making sure that you're like, okay, in this video and before you you planned it, you practice a bit and you're like, I need to make sure I say these statements and then that those statements are then used in the transcription that become the blog post, then, then it should work fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. Paul, okay. feel free to, to weigh in on that. Yeah, no, as long as you're using those keywords in the, in the actual textual content on the page, um, mm -hmm. you should be fine. Because yep. uh, Google so far, you know, obviously can't um, go through videos and actually find keywords within video yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that textual component is very important. Right. Okay. And, and, and from y'all's, you know, knowledge of this is, is having a video embedded on a blog post a, a detractor from a ranking in any way, or is it still fine no. to do? Okay. I think, I think, and I think video is solidly engaging, right? And yeah. it, 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 I, I would suspect that the, um, you know, you, you get one, one crack at saying it live, right? And doing your recorded video. So it, it may be that, you know, the, the quality of the overall content uh, of the transcription may not line up with if you, you know, had written a prescribed article. If your lead in is a video that's engaging, um, you know, video is obviously super simple to consume. And it's easier on it's easier for people. So you know, I I don't at all you know disagree that, that that's just another output of following the same process, right? So mm -hmm. our view here mm -hmm. is the process, right? You let the data talk, you let the data you know lead you to how do you build these beachheads uh, relative to themes that you want to you know compete on long term, and you look at this as a long term strategy. So I know you know Jared, you you, you look at okay, what does you know fifteen thousand searches break down into in my particular area? Um, you know that people in your people in your area are in your broader area are searching for solutions, right? In the pain areas you're trying to serve, and this is where there's a bit of a reset needed and think that it has to come with this kind of strategy and thinking. You know, if I were to take five hundred dollars in in ad spend and light it up next month for your clinic, you know we're going to generate some kind of traffic, right, to your page just because we're you know we're buying ads, and you know, but if we turn that off the following month, there, there's no, there's no residual traffic, right? So this is a whole, you know, residual and ongoing in, in increasing the amount of traffic that you get over time by building, you know, these quote unquote marketing beachheads, which, you know, the end result I see is, you know, you, you end up pumping up the value, of your, value of your business away, right? So mm -hmm. if you look at just breaking down shoulder pain, and if you did that for your clinic, and then tied in the lead generators and did that for, you know, six, seven, eight, ten themes, not next month, but it's a, this is an ongoing, you know, strategy that, that you build over time. That has a huge impact on the value of your business from a mar marketer standpoint when you do go to sell. And so I think there's lots of different benefits of this. Um, and that's why, and you know, the other thing we we're trying to do, you know, say to clinics when it comes to SEO is, we'll often see people go, I got proposals from an SEO company. They want, you know, 800 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, $2,000 a month, whatever. Right. It, it mm -hmm. tends to come as a month. Fee, right? um, I, I say focus on these, this asset strategy and build the assets at whatever rate you can do that within your budget. Right. So, you know, if you can build one a month, build one a month, if you can build three a year, build three a year. Uh, but do it properly, have it properly researched, build those beaches and adjust your budget accordingly because you're getting an asset for it versus, you know, getting, right. being puzzled at the end of the month going, well, what did I spend X on, right? Like, mm -hmm. what did I, you know, it's too often it's, it's, you know, uh, the cart's ahead of the horse on, on a lot of the strategies where you're spending money, but you're not quite sure, you know, what's the under underpinning strategy that you're, you're trying to build on for, your end result. Right. So how do, so at this point we, we know that, you know, there were some, some things we could focus on with shoulder blade pain. So how do you then, if for the rest of the strategy, how are you, I'm curious as to, you know, yeah, continuing down the different rabbit holes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, you know, how do you build out your plan from what you see in the data? Um, and what does that look like on, you know, on paper, on, you know, on your computer, uh, with the list of things you're going to end up writing about. 
Yeah. So we, uh, what I would do in, in, if we, if we were working with a clinic again, this, you know, keyword ex exploration is something that clinics can do on their own. They don't necessarily have to have somebody walk them through it, but the starting point would be trying to do some geographical data research, uh, in terms of search volume in market, which again is a, is a, is a, uh, component of market size to try and get a handle on how, how deep in the rabbit hole do we think we need to write articles for, right? Because mm -hmm. the bottom line is uh, pain between the shoulder blades, right? Or pain around your shoulder blades. Uh, that, as I said earlier, I want to be clear on this. In a uber competitive market, that might be an article, right? In a less competitive market, that might be a 400 word paragraph or uh, two or three minutes of, the, of your video, right? That ends up being, tra longer, being, tra being tried within the longer article, right? Okay. So, you know, whether we, you know, we could be doing fewer long articles where the sub subtopics become paragraphs in a less competitive market, but in a, in a, a highly competitive market, those sub subtopics would likely become their own articles, right? So okay. first phase is just deciding, you know, at what level do we think we need to go to depending on how competitive your market is. And that addresses some of your questions about search volume, right? Right. Um, and then based on that, then we will go through and we'll determine in, in now, what we've done with clients that we've worked through on this process is we've sandboxed this concept. Uh, we've sent the clients suggested uh, keywords, whether they're actual keywords or questions, right? Mm -hmm. Based on the data that we've looked at, and that's the combination of volume and keyword difficulty, we're not filtering them, right? Unless we see th something that is, you know, what is the best painkiller for shoulder pain? We would probably take that out, right? Um, but we'll, we'll use some judgment, uh, on our side in terms of whether something should or should be in, but that one could, you know, that one though, for example, could be an interesting play for, our, for there's better treatments than pain, right? So there's mm -hmm. maybe, you know, I think you could yeah. click on this, you know, we would, you know, you'll find, you know, uh, there could be other opportunities, right. In terms of how people are searching for that, this one. So you look at it, that one actually has nothing at the end of the rabbit hole, right? Some of them do. Um, but we would provide a list of su suggested uh, micro topics or call them things that could, would either be subheadings or sub sub articles in a highly competitive market. Mm -hmm. And then the clinic would go through them and go based on our, the patients we see, you know, the kind of things that we think people ask in practice. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Right. And then we come out with uh, a list. And then from that list, we would architect the article structure and say, okay, what are, how many articles does this represent? Is it one? Is it four? Is it whatever? Right. Um, and then we would uh, architect the articles based on this is what we think the, ult the ideal heading should be. This is what we think the H2 should be. This is what we think the paragraphs should include. Um, and then that would go to whoever is doing the writing work. Okay. Um, so can so we that's something we do. That's something that. Can we do that process or at least part of it now with like continuing on the shoulder pain thing? Like which of these subtopics would you choose and why and then you know at the end of it we'd have kind of okay you got your shoulder pain is your theme and these are the articles that we'd be looking to write or the article when these would be our h2s if you're in a uh, maybe a smaller market sure so we're working in the category now this is just everything related to shoulder pain mm -hmm. um and now keep in mind we are only looking at, at questions here so if i back up to our, our previous level, right? We've got keywords and we've got questions. So we'll, mm -hmm. we will separately go down both of those uh, sections and see where the data leads us. But let's just go back to keywords, for example. So um, this is everything related to shoulder pain. And we went through the, um, you know, for, out of curiosity, the left versus right shoulder pain, mm -hmm. pain thing. Um, but let's pick, uh, for example, shoulder muscle pain where it's something that people have got a fair number of searches for. Um, so let's come into here. <clears throat> so at the top level, you're not so worried about that having a hard difficulty. You're, you're like, you know, that's a common thing. So let's, and it has good volume. Let's click on that and see if there are some sub ones that don't have difficulty ranking. Exactly. Oh, no, absolutely. Okay, yeah, we don't, sense. yeah, absolutely. We, yeah. It, as the further down you go, the more you're going to find, uh, items that have got le less uh, difficulty, but the, the difficulty ranking just means, especially in a more competitive market, don't start there. Right. Mm -hmm. But everything that we do rolls up to support that. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the high keyword difficulties are, are our end goal. 
Um, but you get there by rolling up with, you know, the more detailed things that people mm -hmm. look for, right? Okay. So again, high in here, you know, we're seeing, you know, things related to uh, just shoulder muscle pain in there is, you know, the shoulder blades are popping up again, right? Um, let's see what else could be interesting. Pain in shoulder. Let's look here, muscle pain in shoulder. Okay, so uh, I would, f again, so small market, uh, we're probably gonna have a, uh, yeah, I, I would, I don't see us creating even in a small market one article for shoulder. I think regardless, there's gonna be multiple, mm -hmm. but in a small market, uh, muscle pain in shoulder, you know, would likely be, you know, 500 to 1,000 words as part of a, a single article in a large market uh, shoulder and muscle pain would be a standalone article. So uh, this is the level at which we would start looking at our H2s, right? Um, so, and we get input from the clinics, uh, obviously in here. So pain and shoulder muscle, that's one of our highest competitive terms because it's, it's, it's shorter, right? Um, that would not likely be, uh, that would be an article title. So that'd be like an H1 and then support by your H2s. And our H2 strategy would come out of a sorting of uh, things that have got, you know, decent volume. Um, and I'm not going to be, you know, super worried about keyword difficulty because we're going to be writing a number of these that are going to contribute to the overall result. So um, if I was, you know, if I was sitting down with you, Jared, and we go, you know, muscle pain in your shoulder and upper arm, right? Uh, arm and shoulder pain, like, you know, connected areas uh, would likely be like an H2. Uh, you, th this we see pop up a lot. How do I do things on my own, right? Mm -hmm. So things that you can do for home remedies, things you can do at home, right? Um, you know, you we would pick up, up uh, would be an example of something that we would likely pick up on here. And as we go down here and we're getting into lower and lower, lower, you know, global search volume or search volume as a whole, does that affect your, I mean, do you tend, we're probably like three or four tiers now from down below shoulder pain, right? Our theme. Mm -hmm. And and we're looking for H2s and, you know, which again, for the viewer is the, the, the titles above the paragraph or paragraphs, you know, it's not the title of the, thing, but it's, you know, you got to have those subtitles are called or subheaders um, throughout that the, Google really looks at those for the content and ranking of, of what you're trying, you know, what you're trying to say in the article. So we're looking for those subtitles here to fill in and guide our, you know, the paragraphs that we're going to be using. When we're this at this level of looking for subtitles, are you concerned uh, do you typically stay up in the higher volumes of these smaller subcategories or because I saw you scrolling down a bit like does it matter is this really like well I'll take a low volume just because I know it's going to help me just to rank higher for shoulder pain as a whole it's a great question um the, the part of the answer is we do take a look at what the you know search volume is but we don't have a lot of concern at this level um you know, Paula, you know, and I were going over some information on a, uh, a project that we did following this process and what you won't, so you're going to see a ton of overlap and similarity in these terms, right? So the lower you go, the more you're going to go, man, this looks like 15 or 20 or 30 different ways of, of getting at the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And by, you know, your, your writing strategy is going to uh, not just go after one line. So if I just take, for example, um, muscle pain in your back or muscle pain in shoulder blades, we're going to be knocking over, knocking off probably 10 or 15 different search terms in that process. Right. So like we've seen articles that, you know, end up having th ranking in thousands of keywords, um, you know, by virtue of creating, you know, half a dozen different articles that are written from this bottom up strategy. Right. So you're going to be crossing a, a cross section of these um, in the majority of cases, just by picking what looks like the common theme. So that's why when I, you know, come back to things like, you know, your shoulder and arm or, you know, shoulder blade or whatever, right? Um, as we write about that, because that paragraph or that article you're going to write is going to be talking about, you know, you may be adding pectoral muscle in there somewhere else in the, in the paragraph, right? Or somewhere else in the article. 
Mm-hmm. Well, by doing that, we're now talking about pectoral muscle and shoulder blade without writing an article about pectoral muscle and shoulder blade, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to be crossing off a ton uh, of these along the way. And so the whole idea is that everything ends up being interconnected and everything rolls up to support the broader theme. Um, and by, but by building it from a research standpoint, um, we want to pick up these common themes where people are, you know, there's, un, you know, it seems sometimes like there's an unlimited number of ways that they're looking at accessing one theme by doing a cross section of our, of our, uh, of our writing on that, you're going to be knocking off a ton of them. And that makes sense. Yeah. Right here, the, just the fact that Google now uses semantic search. So Google right. understand your intent versus, you know, what exact words that you're using on the page. So pain in pectoral muscle and shoulder blade could, you know, also have Google show that same article for somebody searching pectoral muscle and shoulder blade pain. So Google will, you know, try to understand their final intent. What is it that they're trying to, you know, achieve or find out on that page? And if they think that previous people who visited that page have found that information, they will show you that page just because they know that it's serving that purpose. So it's, a, it's called semantic search. It's it a new and and that how do you define that? What does it mean? It, it means it's, they're it's, not. It's not as much like the exact long tail keyword. It's it's more of switch the words around if it means the same thing like exactly. that's what yeah, we're trying to get at. Google trying to understand what you're looking for versus what you're typing in right because those are two mm-hmm. different things. sometimes people are not really able to convey what they're exactly looking for right when you look at uh, keywords like left shoulder blade pain and heart that could just mean that somebody's having you know maybe heart ache or you know shoulder blade pain and they're trying to you know somehow explain to Google what they're going through so now what Google is doing, instead of just trying to read those words and try to find those words and articles, they're now trying to understand what that phrase means and then find articles that meet that need that mm. the sister has. Wow. That's well put, Paul. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, it, what's blown us away, Jared, in this process is, uh, you know, you let the data take you where it takes you. Um, but the flip side is, when you start putting together a number of long form articles that are, you know, got significant depth and they're built around this research is on the flip side, the number of ways that you start getting traffic that you would never have thought of that you would get the traffic. Right. And it's again, uh, not at this line item by line item standpoint, because the cross sectioning that happens is, is fairly unreal. Um, Mm -hmm. So we're just looking for the things that from a clinician standpoint, um, you think would line up from, you know, the kind of questions that you, in, in, in things that you've seen with your patients based on this, you know, theme, uh, sub, 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 uh, you know, level mm-hmm. of research. And we, we work, we look to the clinics that we work with to help piece together the puzzle that works best for them. But the flip side of, you know, it, there's an, a huge amplification that comes out of this in terms of uh, 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 how using, you know, kind of semantic lookup, you end up just, just having, a, a bigger result than you would have planned. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so this is the kind of thing, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it, it looks like we're throwing a lot of things around, but ultimately if this is something that a clinic wanted to do on their own. You know, all we did is start by searching for shoulder pain. Right. Mm-hmm. And then we started digging a little bit deeper and you can't really do this wrong. Right. You can, you know, you ask five or 10 different people to go through this and pick, uh, that the stubs or sub subtopics to focus on different people may pick different combinations, but ultimately people are looking for this stuff, right? Uh, so it, it's, it's the, the discipline is in the process. Uh, the discipline is in committing to writing, you know, solid content that'll stand the test of time, which is in that 1500 to 2000 word range, be it unique content or be it, uh, or written content or be it video that's transcribed which is, is mm-hmm. you suggest as an alternative. And then I think trying to piece together enough related pieces that support your call to action so that you can put together a drip marketing campaign, uh, uh, whether it be an ebook or a tip sheet and, you know, things that as people find these articles that they at least start to engage with you uh, as, as a clinic mm-hmm. and don't just come and go. Right. Yeah. So that, that's our kind of frame picture of what we call asset based SEO. Um, and, okay. you know, we want to see clinics, you know, that it's, the most exciting part of this process for us has been, been, you know, we've had a clinic we were working with that had to shut some of this kind of asset based stuff down due to, you know, financial impact and COVID. Right. Well, you know, we look at the data and they're still getting traffic and leads, you know, this week. Um, Mm -hmm. So it doesn't stop working for you. Right. And 
that the same will be five or 10 years from now. So, um, you know, we just think when you come back it up even further, this is a piece of your marketing mix, right? It should be a piece of your marketing mix. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A uh, couple more, you know how I am at this point. We've been working together for years. I always want those little details. Um, there's a little bit on the, uh, on, on, of a side note, but you had just mentioned it with, you know, obviously combining this, this strategy of bringing people, you know, to your website with the lead generation, you know, funnels that you've created. Do you guys find, or, you know, I don't know if there's been any testing or just, you know, knowledge based on, you know, broader research on this topic. Do you find that having these lead magnets, you know, whether it's an ebook or whatever, um, in line in your article as kind of offerings, maybe once or twice through the article versus say on a sidebar, does any, I mean, can you speak to, to how you are suggesting to your clients to set up that component of it is how to, you know, when we've we written, we got a well-written article based on the data. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, this is what we're finding is the best at converting the visitor into a lead or even a, a phone call um, in that moment. Paul, do you want to, uh, I'll lead on that one. Take it. Yeah, well, th th there's a, um, so we've been playing on the longer form articles. There's a couple of different ways that we played with this. Uh, in uh, the initial build outs, we, we went with a close standpoint. So the, the bottom of the article would lead into a, hey, while you're here, you know, download our tip sheet or download our ebook on, you know, whatever is connected to whatever the topic is you're looking at. And I said, mm -hmm. just to make it clear, that topic should connect to multiple articles. So you're not rebuilding that, you know, funnel content every single time. Um, and we've seen some decent uptake on that. Uh, we've switched it to an on exit play. Um, so as you either, you know, scroll down a certain percentage or you leave the page, then it pops up. And okay. so, you know, that, that's the strategy that we've been, we've been using. We're not necessarily a fan of, you know, kind of in your face type pop-ups as soon as you load something because ideally if you're developing right. really good content right that's designed to bring bring people in because and let's not lose this in the whole overall perspective really good content is substantial content right so it means people aren't searching for something if they're not actually looking for an answer right mm -hmm. so it's important that whether you're doing a video or whether you're writing that article um, or whether it's the drip emails or the ebook or the tip sheet that follows if you're not writing it for substance, then, you know, I wouldn't do it at all. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, we're going to assume that people are going to read that article because it actually is a meaningful article based on what they're looking for. So in that case, the call to action, um, you know, the connection to the lead magic magnet, uh, we generally will tone it back a little more than what you would see on a, you know, if you're trying people, right. If you're trying to yell at people, then you pop it up and it's on your homepage and away you go. Um, mm -hmm. So we're doing things that are based on percentage of scroll down the page and then that'll come up because, Page or on, or on exit. Okay, very good. And that's something that you guys have the capability of doing with Lead Automator. Yeah. So yes. you can you can say, all right, if they've scrolled down fifty percent of the page, we're going to do a little slide in or a pop right. up. Hey, you know, looks looks like you're interested in this topic. Here's a here's our free report on or based on time on page or whatever. Right. Something okay. that shows that they've that they've actively been engaging on the page. So. Um, okay. You know, those are you know again, but again, that strategy tends to be one that's put in place when you've got a, a, a meaningful, substantial content strategy. So you're going to assume right. people are there to engage in what you've written, right? So let mm -hmm. that lead um, and then in, integrate your call to action. But, you know, often, you know, there's, we see, you know, a little more of the, the what I call the sham wow strategy, which is, you know, let's try and, you know, dazzle them and, you know, suck them in and, you know, make it look like things are happening and, uh, and then we'll deal with it from there. But uh, you put this kind of work into your content. We, we, let the content lead, but integrate good uh, call to act, call to actions that are, you know, based on the fact that they're that they're there to engage. And Paul, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say like a lot of this stuff is influenced by you know just normal marketing strategies, strategies that we use in advertising as well. Like Jared, we've run ads for you, and you know how we run. We will normally send traffic to a useful page retarget people from there and, you know, then try to upsell uh, maybe a free guide, checklist, you know, a free workshop, whatever that might be. But all of that, you know, relies on the fact that you need to build trust with your audience. 
And that's what you're doing with these posts. You're going into a certain theme, you're digging down deep, and you're answering different things that a, a, a prospective patient might, you know, questions that he might have. And then once you've built that trust, then you make that call to action for, you know, downloading the, the lead magnet, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to offer out on that page. So, yeah, I think it all ties back into organic as well from, you know, our paid strategies, um, tying back into organic strategies. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, we're going down an, another rabbit hole here, but another, it's yeah, it, it, I mean, it is definitely. And, and so now one of the things that I'm working on is, you know, as far as content based marketing is email marketing. And, you know, what I'm finding and I've just started doing this is, is really, really great response to, um, you know, more personal story based um you know, well, I shouldn't say story-based marketing. I mean, it is, but, you know, telling stories. Okay. You know, I was, I think I told you maybe when this came up on the podcast, I can't remember exactly, but, um, you know, telling the story of a really great customer experience with a local business that, you know, made things right. And then, and then tying that into my call to action of, you know, let, let us wow you. And so, you know, so just as an example, but, but the idea being, um, that people are going to be responsive and actually read through things that are more, you know, entertaining or engaging in some way, as opposed to like diving straight into, you know, muscle pain between the shoulders. So right. like, do you, do you feel like there's a place for weaving the two together? Maybe, maybe, maybe going about these articles in terms of telling an actual patient story, right. That, you know, we had, we had a patient last month, let's call her Mrs. Jones, and she came in with pain between the shoulder blade muscles. She had developed it for this reason. And, but just kind of telling it in, in the form of a story of a, of a patient or of yourself um, that incorporates the things that we know the data says we need to target. I mean, do you, um, just from your, you guys have had so much experience in this world, um, do you feel like that might get more, re, you know, incorporate more readability or, or, you know, engagement such that they do make it to that call to action? Or are people like, you know what, I'm here, I'm not here to, for Mrs. Jones, I'm here to learn about shoulder pain, pain between my, you know, shoulder blades? Yeah, that's a good question. And like I said a little bit earlier, um, we're not, and I don't think you should be out in this process to be competing with WebMD, right? Mm -hmm. um, although we're, we're drawing people in based on what they're looking for. Now we call it the, the connection to service, right? Which is in, in the, the way you write the content, everybody's different in terms of how people would present themselves, but you want it to be clear all the way through and right off the top that you're talking about, you know, how physical therapy can help somebody with whatever this condition or this, this sub subset is that we're talking about. Now, how you do that, that's clinic specific, right? So we don't see, I, I personally, you know, I, I think we, we do it on our lead automator content marketing we're highly personal. Everything we write from our content standpoint, content packs in our kind of content ready marketing, it's written as one person talking to another. Hey, how you doing? How's your back pain? You know, hope you're feeling better today. And, you know, sometimes we'll, you know, weave in some sample testimonials or, you know, things that clinics can say about, you know, in the first person, right. That they can adjust for themselves. So that's a strategy that we deploy and we think works well in our, our marketing automation. Um, ultimately it's up to the clinic to determine how they want to make that connection from content to service. And it can either be, you know, talking about, Hey, you know, we're X, Y, Z physical therapy, you know, servicing this market, you know, we've been here for, you know, a number of years. And, um, you know, we wanted to share some information with you today on, um, you know, pain around your shoulder blades or shoulder blades and muscles. Um, or it could be, you know, the kind of example you gave, um, that's very clinic specific. Um, mm -hmm. but in, in the stuff that we write from a, one-to-one uh, -one marketing standpoint, we are much more, you know, in toward not quite storytelling, but, you know, convert, call it conversational, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So there's, you know, you've, you've kind of got your corporate brand approach, you've got a conversational approach, and then you've got, you know, I think you're a little more on the creative, creative aspect with what you're doing on the storytelling. Most of our stuff lands in the conversational, um, okay. you know, realm, but uh, that's an important aspect, right? Because as you write this content, so if there's clinics that are listening today and are thinking about, you know, their SEO asset thinking strategy, when it comes to, you don't want to just have it be, you know, uh, a list of uh, you know, data that we search from opportunity mining, be a hundred percent the end result. You need to craft and frame this from a service delivery standpoint in a way that reflects your brand, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, somewhere on, on that spectrum, 
you know, you'll find the right way to address it for you. Okay. So there's a couple other things I wanted to ask about. Um, and so the, the first one was, let's say someone's done this and they've given time for the Google bots to, you know, re-index or whatever <laughs> the technical stuff is, but you know, three, four months later when you would, ex and tell me if I'm wrong on that um, time frame. But, you know, obviously you're not going to, it doesn't Im immediately take effect that all of a sudden you, you publish a, an article and the next day right. it's being ranked, even though it, if it's written well, it might be ranked in three months. I guess it has a, a process it goes through, right? So yep. let's say enough time has gone by. How do you then find out how, like, what do you guys do to, to, to find out the actual results? How do you know how you're ranking for certain terms as a, as a website? That's a, that's a good question. Um, Are there tools or free tools that yeah. you can, you can go to, yeah. to, to find that out? Well, there's, a, there's a, two, a couple of different components to it. So first is on what I call it, you know, inbound, which is where are people coming from? Um, we'll tend to, you know, obviously have rely heavily on Google analytics. So uh, if, for example, if th these articles end up living within, let's call it your blog folder, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to look at, you know, where are we getting traffic from on anything that is in that blog folder of our website? So not just how many pages are, are being visited or, or how many visitors came in here, time on page, whatever, you know, that stuff's interesting, but it's more where are people finding that from, right? And then we can start to get exposure into, you know, the keywords that are being used um, to find that article. And that's where if, if you, you know, the deeper you go in this, that's where I think you get that exponential effect of there being, you know, more than what you would think of, of in terms of the number of keywords that are in that semantic context being put together. So we do some research on inbound, um, largely using Google Analytics. Um, and then from a response standpoint, you know, you would look at whatever tools you're using, right? So inside Lead Automator, we have our own tools to, you know, get a sense of what's happening from, you know, conversion and uptake on, the lead magnets or the drip campaigns or using some other system, you, whatever system you're using, um, you're going to look at that to see, you know, what's happening from an uptake in the conversion standpoint. Mm -hmm. But you know, those, those are, I think those the two, are two pieces things. of the So Google analytics is for those who aren't, you know, aware that's, that's specific to your website and you're looking at, you know, the traffic to each page and you can get a lot of great data from that. But so there's not like a, here's, you know, um, there's not like a, pay, a a website out there or a, a service where you can say, you know, how am I, how is this web page or I'm sorry, how's my website or how am I ranking on this actual term or key phrase? It's not like a separate uh, well, thing. Sorry. It's all so through Google it, Analytics. No, not, not necessarily true. So if you're, it depends on what you're um, engaging with from an either tool standpoint or an agency standpoint. So, like at patient sites, we have a, you know, an SEO discipline or an SEO service. And as part of that SEO service, we use tools like Ahrefs and there's a number of them out there where we'll set up profiles for a client site and monitor, um, you know, what search key, key, key terms they're ranking on within these kind of contexts. Um, now that's something we do within, you know, an SEO engagement, but it, there are tools out there that, you know, whatever tools we use, anyone else can use, right? That a mm -hmm. clinic can use that. Uh, but generally you have to get in to do this properly. You have to get into the paid tool category, right? There's into um, the what? Um, category? paid tool, paid tool. A paid category. tool. Okay. Like, yeah. I'm not, you know, Paul, I don't know if you're aware of any free tool that'll give you anywhere near the kind of data, you know, that you'll get with a Moz or a, a Ahrefs, but the, the information is all there. Um, but now you're getting into kind of, you know, what we call the area of SEO management, right? So if you're working mm -hmm. with an SEO company, that's the kind of thing that they should be doing for you. Um, or you can subscribe to those kind of tools yourself. But on the okay. free basis, Google Analytics is where you'll get at least most intelligence because it's, it's providing you with data to your website, right? So that's your, you know, probably your best free option. Okay, okay. So Ahrefs is a, this is a paid tool you're showing us that you guys Correct. pay for. Okay, yep. dang, yep. I was about to go over there right yep. after this. And <laughs> 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 All right, cool. Um, and, okay, and then the, the last thing I wanted to ask was specific to patient sites itself. And um, are, are you guys doing this on kind of like a, a client by client basis and building the, helping to build these assets for your clients or helping to guide them to do the building? Or is it something that you're rolling out throughout the, the website platform itself, you know, that comes with when people are subscribers and use patient sites as a website. 
how is that, how is this all working into, and I know it's sandbox right now, so I, you might not have like a, this is what we're already doing, but what's the, what's the approach and how you are applying this within patient sites itself? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question too. Um, so I, I think this is really a matter of, of kind of our, our, you know, formalization of how to bring the discipline of what I, how I think SEO is done, right. This is, this is the kind of thing that large company, very large scale companies would do, right. To build out an SEO strategy. So, um, the takeaway is more on, on tactics than, than anything else. Right. Um, so what we're doing is this isn't the kind of thing we can build into our, our, our base fee for our patient sites marketing pro, which is kind of all the tools you need to run a website. It's 149 a month. Um, this is real hands-on, right? You're, you're in the trenches with the clinic working through this. So it's not the kind of thing we could do within that no. subscription. Yeah. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is a couple things through this kind of format, educate people on what they can do, because we know there's lots of people that uh, clinics that, you know, are, are interested in how do I advance the ball myself and we're no secrets company, right? We want to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we think at the end of the day, you know, there's ways to do things. And if you want to work with someone like us to help you do it, we'd be happy to do that. Um, from a page standpoint, the approach we're, we're taking going forward with SEO is um, we are doing having an S we have an SEO management plan 99 a month. And you were breaking that up really a little is, bit there. You said it's 99 a month or how much? One, one ninety nine. Okay. Um, now that doesn't include the develop, the actual development of written content. Um, mm -hmm. So the one ninety nine basically means we'll be uh, managing or we'll be looking from an oversight standpoint for your SEO health, right? So we'll be meeting with you on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. We'll be developing plans, developing strategies, looking at what's working, what's not working. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a, your account managers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then attached to that, there's a series of tactics. And those tactics, you can dial up or back based on budget, right? So what we're trying to do is move from a world where, you know, too often we see either see SEO is watered down, mm -hmm. so, you know, somehow built into a program, but you're actually, there's really not much of substance in there or it's super high priced and it's every single month. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the reason we're taking this approach is we think, so if a clinic, um, our, our, so our price point for a long form article, uh, research done well, it's $600, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not cheap, um, yeah. but it follows the process that's done properly. Now yeah. clinic can obviously do that themselves and, and, you know, we're happy to educate the market in doing that. Um, but you know, if you look at that $600, you can say, okay, I want to do them a year or six a year or 12 a year or whatever. Right. Um, so you can adjust your budget that way versus feeling like you're signing up for, you know, an SEO program that's either every month, yeah. every month in, in, I think too often is either weak on substance mm -hmm. or, you know, so highly priced that it, it's tough to keep up with. Right. So, right. We think this lets clinics adjust their budgets accordingly and know that whenever you're investing in a deliverable, you're building assets, right? And if, if you want us to do the monitoring and the strategy and, and the ongoing review of what's going on, we're happy to do that, right? And that's one ninety nine a month. Cool. Very good. And that's, I mean, I've seen some, I, I have a lot of students that are like, a common question is, hey, you know, I'm I'm doing this or that on my website and this guy's, you know, said that they're, they'll do our SEO and it's $500 a month. And I'm like, okay, well ask them these 10 questions and have them show you specifically what they're doing. And it's just like half the time, it's like, they're just, what they're doing is collecting a check and you know, they're still asking you to write everything and the stuff they write isn't great. And it's just like, as I that's think what, you so get, I, that's what I call the under service pricing. Like, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, there's, it's, it's crazy. It, you know, you're not, you're not able to deliver enough of substance, right? So mm -hmm. it either ends up, you can't deliver on substance at the price point and we'll see it at, you know, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, whatever a month. And there's not enough in there from a, a substance or asset building standpoint. Right. So, mm -hmm. but we look at it and say, okay, to do, to be here to help a clinic f with their SEO and be able to answer the questions and be, looking at proactively looking out for the clinic versus reactively, you know, waiting for someone to call. We think we can offer a pretty good service if a clinic needs it for one ninety nine a month. Right. But we, we separate tactic. Right. And, but we put the tactic separate because then you're in charge of when you want to dial up or dial down specific tactics that are, that are asset driven like this. And, but when you buy it, you know what you're getting, right. You know, okay, I'm, I'm attacking 
shoulder pain, uh, you know, uh, shoulder blade or muscles or whatever, right? So mm -hmm. let's go and attack that. And then maybe in three months, let's attack another one of those, right? Well, when you write the check, you, you know what you're getting for that check. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you decide you can do SEO management on your own, that's great. Do that on your own, right? We can mm -hmm. still do with, you know. Uh, yeah, very good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, this has been enlightening as always. Uh, I'm excited to, to try and, you know, incorporate this into, you know, our, our strategies moving forward and always strengthening the website and traffic and, and conversions, of course. Uh, and yeah, this is really cool to, you know, this, this bottom up approach of going multiple layers down and, and seeing what the data really is telling us to write about, not just what we think we should be writing about, which is usually wrong right. as clinicians anyhow. <laughs> so yeah. um, was there anything, yeah. you know, on this topic or these strategies, you know, that we didn't get into today that, that you wanted to, to also address? Or do you feel like we kind of hit, hit all the nails on the head? Uh, I, I think we covered most of the bases, Paul. Is there anything yeah. else on your end? Yeah. Right. No, I think, I think we covered the bases. I, I, you know, I, again, I summarize it at a macro level. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to, to have a strategy for a marketing mix. And that marketing mix should include SEO. And SEO should be viewed through, through what we're calling this asset lens, right? Like if you're not building assets, then you know, you're just spending money, right? Um, and I, it's what I'm, I'm confident in is that asset strategy um, not only will drive business today or, or as, as traffic you know, flows through your site, but I think it has a huge impact in terms of what your business is worth years down the road, because th that's what we call evergreen, right? It, if you do this properly, it's not going to go away, right? You're in it weathers. We talked on your podcast, how do you weather the storms of, you know, mm -hmm. down markets, right? Well, you know, th this kind of thing doesn't get shut off when, you know, your, your budget it has to be cut back, right? It'll continue working for you, it's, but it's more of a slow, you know, straw approach, right? It's when we talked about investment mix, right? In our podcast, which some things are, you know, you're looking for a quick hit. Some things you're looking for, you know, stability and substance and, and that'll, that'll be there for you down the road. Yeah, right on. Well, guys, thank you again uh, for, for the information as always. Really, really appreciate it. I always learn so much from you both. Um, yeah, so guys, uh, viewing, if you want to check out anything that we talked about, you know, reach out to them uh, to incorporate any of that, any of this stuff into your website or your, your marketing strategies, just go to patientsites.com and you can connect with them that way. Again, thank you guys. And we'll, uh, we'll do this again soon. Thanks, Jared.